Our problem is find the formula for the sum of the first n terms. Okay, sigma notation of 1 plus i over n, quantity squared times 1 over n. And then I want to take that and then find the limit as n goes out to infinity. So this here comes up when we take areas. So at the end, we'll tie it back to this business of area under what curve. So my first step is just to expand this out and see what happens. So we're just going to expand the square, 1 plus 2i over n, i squared over n squared, times 1 over n. And then we multiply the 1 over n through, which gives me 1 over n, 2i over n squared, i squared over n cubed. To decompose even further, we know since n is fixed, okay, we know it's fixed because it's in the limits. The i is the number that moves around. The n, that's going to be given to you, and then you can compute as soon as you have a number for n. We're doing this in general, so n is just kind of floating around. It's fixed, but we don't know what n is yet. So n is fixed, which means as far as the summation is concerned, we could just slip it on through to the outside. That's going to make this a lot easier to look at. So when I do that, let me come over here. The 1 over n pulls out my first term, leaving me with a 1. The 2 over n squared can pull out, leaving me with a summation of i. And then the 1 over n cubed can be pulled out, leaving me with a summation of i squared. All right, at this point, I have to go look up some formulas in the book if I don't know these off the top of my head. The first one looks weird, but all this is saying is take 1 and add it to itself n times. So the summation from 1 to n of 1 is just 1 plus 1 plus 1 n times, and that gives me n. For the other two, I'll need to look those up. Summation of i going from 1 to n of i is n times n plus 1 over 2. Summation of i going from 1 to n of i squared is n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 divided by 6. Now I can put them in for our summations to get a closed formula. Okay, let's take a look. We put our n into here. The 1 over n and n cancel, leaving me with a 1. Put my n, n plus 1 over 2 here can cancel the 2's out, and then I can take out one of the n's, leaving me with an n plus 1 over n. And then over here, what I'm going to do is multiply the whole entire thing out, leaving me with, okay, dropping a 2 here. We have one n's going to come out, leaving me with a square in the bottom, and keep the 6, and then what's left over is n plus 1 times 2n plus 1. We're going to want that all factored, multiplied out, so that way we can take our limit easier. And that's going to leave me with 2n squared plus 3n plus 1. So this is good enough for our closed formula. As we go out to infinity, let's notice the 1 is going to stay as it is. For these fractions, just remember, when we have polynomial over a polynomial, we only need to keep the term with the highest degree. So in this case, I can throw away the 1, and then the limit's going to be whatever comes out, leaving me with n over n, which goes to 1. For my third term, I can throw away the 3n plus 1, because I only need to keep the n squareds. So that limit's going to go to Okay, the n squareds cancel, leaving me with a 2 over 6, or a 1 third. So when I take the limit, we're going to get 1 plus 1 plus 1 third, and that's going to leave me with 7 thirds. So remember, this summation is going to correspond to an area. So let's figure out what it came from and see if it agrees with something we may know sooner or later. So let's take a look at the summation. Well, we want to identify a function times a delta x. So I want to identify a height times a base. So here, this is clearly looking like a function, and this is looking like what we typically use for the base. So the function is going to be 1 plus 
x squared if I believe that i over n corresponds to our points x. Okay, then I have the base of each of these rectangles is going to be 1 over n, but we're taking a summation of n of those, so the width of the rectangle is going to be n times 1 over n, which means we're looking at an interval of length 1. Now if I put 1 into here, we're pretty much starting out at x equals 0. So this function is 1 plus x squared on the interval 0 to 1. It starts at 0 and it has length 1. Okay, in 4.4 we'll actually see how to compute this area. So we'll have this little thing we call a definite integral. And then the definite integral, when we have the rule for that, it's going to tell us that this has to be equal to 7 thirds, which agrees with our limit using rectangles.